have you ever looked at a bunch of numbers and thought, what the heck is going on here? Or where do we even start with this? Today, we're talking about measures of central tendency, your essential starting point for all things data analysis. Hi, I'm Matthew Courtney, and here we talk all about education research and data. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and come be a part of our community. Now, measures of central tendency might sound complex, but trust me, by the end of this video, you'll be wondering why you ever found it daunting in the first place. There are three measures of central tendency that help us understand the center of our data. They are the mean or average, the median, the middle number, or the mode, the most frequent number. Let's start by discussing the mean. It's the one that most of us are familiar with. You simply add up all the numbers together, then divide by however many numbers there are. For example, if you have four scores, two, three, five, and 10, the mean is two plus three plus five plus 10 divided by four, or 20 divided by four, or five, simple as that. Now the median is the middle number when you line everything out in order. Picture your data as a line of people standing shortest to tallest. The median is the guy standing in the exact middle of your line. If there's an odd number of data points, it's straightforward. But if there's an even number, then the median is the average of the two middle numbers. Let's use our previous numbers as an example. The data in order is 2, 3, 5, and 10. Since there's an even number of data points, our median is 3 plus 5 divided by 2, or 8 divided by 2, or 4. Finally, the mode. This one's all about popularity. Which number makes the most appearances in your data? That's your mode. To demonstrate this, we need a larger data set. So let's try for a data set that is 2, 2, 3, 5, 5, 5, 10. The number five appears three times, more than any other number, so that's our mode. Many of us have been trained to look solely at the average, but each of the three measures tells us something different and can be impacted differently by a distribution of scores. The mean gives us the average, which can be skewed by very high or very low numbers. The median isn't affected by outliers, so it can often give a more typical picture of our data and can signal skewness in the mean. The mode, on the other hand, tells us about frequency and can really be helpful in understanding commonalities in very large sets of data. We need to look at all three of these stats when examining any data set. Let's step into a classroom for a moment and think about some real world applications. Imagine that you're a teacher wanting to understand the performance of your students in the last unit assessment. You calculate the mean and find that it's 75. It's not too bad. But then you realize that two students scored 100 and two students scored 20. These scores are influencing the mean. So you calculate the median to find that it's 72. This gives a more accurate picture of the middle ground of performance. Finally, you find out that the mode of the score is 70%. That means that more students scored 70% than any other. By understanding all three measures, you now have a clearer and more holistic view of the class and how they performed and can now make better decisions for planning your future instruction. Let's now turn to a spreadsheet so I can show you how to calculate these numbers correctly. On the screen is a simple distribution of 25 random scores. To calculate the mean, we will select an empty cell and type equal sign average and then an open parentheses. We'll select our data type a close parentheses, and then hit enter. You can see that it has returned a mean score of 46.68. To find the median, we do the same thing. We select an empty cell, type an equal sign, median, and open parentheses. Then we select our data, type a close parentheses, and click enter. The median is 50. Finally, we will check the mode. In an empty cell, we type equal sign, mode, open parentheses. Then select the data, type a close parentheses, and hit enter. The mode is 91. Remember that mode isn't especially useful for a small data set like this, but the steps remain the same regardless of the number of values. If all this spreadsheet work feels like too much, check out my free distribution analysis tool at www.matthewbcourtney.com forward slash DAT. This will allow you to upload your data and calculate all of these statistics and more in just a matter of seconds. 
Measures of central tendency might sound like a mouthful, but they are essential tools in the world of data and education research. They help us get to the core of our data, to understand trends and to make informed decisions. If you found value in this video today, make sure you like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this playlist. See you next time.